I'd like to call the meeting to order. This is the council meeting of May 5th of the City Council, the Library Board, Housing Authority Board, the City representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. And I would like to call on Council Member Iris Smotrich to lead us in the flag salute. Can we uh, fix the audio system, please? Okay, I'm going to take um, a, a very short uh, break here. We are uh, connecting telephonically with uh, our attorney, Steve Quintanilla, who's not here. He'll, he'll be joining us by a uh, teleconference, and it'll just be a moment to hook him up, and we'll be right back. Still don't have them. I'll do the uh, yeah. Yes, I am. All week. So I'll be glad to do that. Sure. Just want to get you in for the, you know, the individual. This is not the same chair. Oh, okay. Well, I appreciate This is the same chair I had? Thank you. I mean, I don't remember doing this. Guy. Well, I think that's the one that was mine. I think it has been. Yeah, but once once you leave your once you leave your seat, you leave it for good, Dan. <laughs> you can come back. I'm going to teach you that. You can you come can back. You can come back. Okay. <laughs> you got to move it over. <laughs> Unless you want to sit next to the mayor. session in so That little girl in the front row starts crossing her legs back and forth. 
I will call the, uh, the meeting back to order. Um, Steve, can you hear us at this point? I, I can hear you loud and clear. Can okay. you hear me? Uh, we're all connected. Uh, the, um, we now have a presentation to Coach Hanmer of the Rancho Mirage High School basketball team. Needless to say, they had an incredible season. We're all... <laughs> you have all made us very, very proud, and we share your success. And uh, Council Member Richard Kite would like to make a presentation to you. Thank you, Mayor. It's really an honor today to have members of the championship basketball team here, along with members of the wrestling team, and it's great also to have the principal of Rancho Mirage High School, Ken Wagner, here. Ken, where are you? The, uh, we certainly are going to honor many of the players, but we're also going to honor the coach, uh, Coach Rob Hamner, Hamner uh, who was selected as Coach of the Year. So I'm going to walk down here, put on my appropriate attire, and I'm going to meet Rob out here in the center of the floor. Here comes Cornball. <laughs> Test. <clears throat> Yay. Okay, I'm now... Uh, is this working? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, as you can see... I am a Rattler now. <laughs> so before we start this uh, presentation, I think it's only appropriate on three to say, go Rattlers. Two, one, two, three, go Rattlers. Okay, so today I have the honor of having the coach over here and, and uh, the coach uh, not only did a great job this year, but has done a couple of great jobs of, of coaching. You've been here for three years now, is that right? Opened up the school three years ago. Uh, the first year he coached uh, sophomores and freshmen. Next year we added juniors, and this last year we added seniors to the squad. So it's really been great. Uh, before uh, Rancho Mirage High School, you were coaching where? I was at Cathedral City for 18 years. Okay, and during that 18 years at Cathedral City, he, in 1997, you won the state championship. For boys? Uh, it was a CIF Southern Section Championship. Southern. <laughs> so Southern Section at Cathedral City, so he's not used to uh, not being a winner. He's been a winner for a long time, and he continues to be so today. So uh, today we're honoring last year's season, and uh, we got up to 30 and 0 before we ran into a little bit of a problem with Chamonix. Was that who was the... Chaminade. So uh, they kind of cut us back a little bit, but uh, up with two minutes to go, we were tied and almost pulled it out. So at this point, uh, uh, the coach has had a 30 and 2 record for last year. <laughs> and we're going to do something about those two, huh, this year? That's the goal. <laughs> So uh, at this point, we're going to introduce some of the players that were on the team. But first of all, I'd like to uh, give a certificate, which reads, on behalf of the entire city council, the city of Rancho Mirage, we hereby recognize and congratulate Coach Rob Hemmer, who led the Rattlers for a historic 30 and 2 overall season, including appearances at CIF Division 3A Final Four, and the California State Playoffs, and was named 2016 CIF Southern Section Division 3A Coach of the Year. Okay, at this time, I'd like to turn the microphone over to the coach who will introduce some of the uh, players and uh, 
Would you like to do that now? Definitely. Okay. It's all yours. Uh, before we do that, we got the opportunity to make up some T-shirts this year. Uh, so Ranch Bras, champions live here. I've got a nice size run at school, and I wasn't sure what size people I was going to be dealing with. So I brought one large, but if I get an email, I will uh, make sure that I get everybody up on the, the dais a nice T-shirt to wear. Uh, list all of our championships that we've earned at the school since we've been there. Uh, I think we're up to like 15 or 16, and the closest school in the Valley, boys basketball, has about five. So we've done some really nice things in the last three years. Uh, you can't do that without players. Uh, we had some really good players, and I'm going to do some right now. The other thing that we do every year is we do a book of all the newspaper clippings and stuff. Uh, it's kind of cool to see all the times Rancho Mirage was in the headlines this year. And as a resident of Rancho Mirage, I'm proud to live here. And it's always fun to see headlines uh, with the Rattlers of Rancho Mirage on top. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Want to do Charles first? Yes. Okay. Uh, fortunately, this child is only a junior in high school, which means he's got one more year. Uh, this year he was voted uh, the league MVP. Uh, he was CIF first team, uh, which is a very big accomplishment. Uh, he scored 24 points a game for us. Um, he's really, really talented, and uh, we're looking forward to having him back again next year. Uh, Charles Neal, come on up. <laughs> All right, you got to take pictures, dude. Yeah, you find them in there. Get that on Snapchat? No? All right, so I'm going to let Charles tell you about his favorite part of the year. All right, so my favorite part of the year was um, probably winning the Max Preps Holiday Classic. Um, not only because we lost last year, but um, seeing how emotional my coach got, um, realized <laughs> it made me realize he's human. So uh, that was uh, very emotional for the whole team. And um, that is something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Thanks. Charles, uh, watching you in some of the games towards the end of the year, it seemed like you really liked to bring that ball down to the top of the key and do your jump shot. Is that your favorite shot? Yeah, you really did a lot of those. That was a great, great effort. Thanks. Uh, next up is our defensive stopper. You can slide over there, buddy. I'm going to skip him. Uh, Luis Guillen, come on up, buddy. <laughs> Luis is a senior, not the tallest dude on our team. Uh, but without a doubt, our favorite player to put in the game and guard the other team's best player. All right, what was your favorite part of the year, dude? Um, my favorite part was beating 29 Palms at, at their home court. Um, it, was, it was great um, beating them because we could make a big run in the playoffs, and we always, like, it's a revival school for us. So they were just always saying they would beat us. So just beating them in their home court was just something that to remember for the rest of the year and something that to go on with my life. Nice job, man. <laughs> so, Luis, are you a junior right now? Senior. Senior. Where are you going to go to college? Um, I'm going to COD to get um, associates in my master's degree. Okay, great. Stay local, huh? That's great. Good to hear that. And the last player brought today, uh, first team all league, uh, all CIF, second team, uh, scored 18 points a game, uh, had the opportunity to coach him all four years of his high school career. Uh, he will be playing college basketball at some place in the near future. Uh, he just had an unbelievable year, uh, overcame a lot of issues, uh, and just brought it every single night. And a huge reason for being undefeated from Thanksgiving to February, end of February, was the fact that he was tough enough to uh, do what he was supposed to do every day. So Darren Evans, come on up. Are we taking photos first or is he talking first? Photos. Say cheese.
Favorite part of the year? Um, yes. Uh, there's a lot, actually, but my favorite part of the year was, I would say, uh, second round of playoffs. Uh, our team went on the road, and we scored 100 points at, uh, what was it, Adel Adelanto. And it was just fun playing because we were just shooting a lot, and everything was going in. So that was my favorite part. So, Darrell, out of that uh, 100 points that the team got, how many did you get? We, we were the team that had 100 points. Yeah, how many did you score individually? Oh, um, it was probably 25 or 30. Yeah, around there, 25. 25 or 30. I noticed you out there shooting, and it's, it just seems like this year's team was really a run-and-shoot team. I mean, how many games did you guys play? Were you up in the 90s or 100s? So. You know, if you, if you missed the first half of the game, you almost missed all the scoring because by the time it was halftime, it was like 50 to 20 or something like that. So. You definitely played differently in the second half than we did in the first half. Okay. You, we were much nicer. <laughs> okay. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. All right. Boys basketball program. Okay, let's get one picture out again. All right, one more person I'd like to introduce. Uh, I'm lucky to have 12 coaches on our basketball staff, uh, which allows us to have a lot of adults work with good kids. Um, we actually have an 81-year-old assistant coach uh, who has a tremendous impact on our program. Uh, coach Bennett is always there for the kids and just does an absolute, job, absolute great job at getting up every day, excited about life, positive with our kids, and when you graduate in 1948, 1952, you have a lifetime of experience, and uh, he's really good at sharing stories. Um, so thanks to Coach Bennett for all he does for our program. Uh, the wrestling team had a fantastic year as well this year, and Coach Spry is here to talk about it. So Coach Spry, come on up. Hello, my name is uh, Ahmad Spry. I'm the head wrestling coach at Rancho Mirage High School. Um, phenomenal year. This is our third year, second year competing at the varsity level. Um, we did some incredible things uh, with two of the wrestlers that are here today. Uh, start with Monica Kezis. Uh, she was able to come o overcome a lot of adversity from the starting point of the season last year to now. Um, she made it two steps further than she did last year. Last year was a it's a little bit different for the girls than it is for the boys because everyone qualifies for the girls. So if you're the varsity starter for your girls, you're, you're in, you're in the, the postseason tournament. So from there, then it's the southern section tournament and then the state tournament. So well, she made it to the state tournament this year, and she finished in the top 16 in her weight class in the state. So that's a huge accomplishment to her, and you know I'm proud of her for what she was able to accomplish. On the boys' side, uh, uh, Devin Purdy, he uh, finished 39 and 7 competed um, in one of the toughest uh, CIFs in, the, in our section at Temecula Valley. If anyone's familiar with wrestling in our, in our section, uh, Temecula Valley High School, they're a household name. So he went there and just basically destroyed everyone in his path. And I'm completely okay with that. Uh, he was, um, he, w he uh, made it all the way to the finals and he uh, ended up beating uh, a kid from Vista Murrieta High School in the finals to capture the first uh, CIF championship in school history. So um, then after that, he also competed at the senior national tournament where he went two and two, beat an Arizona state champion, beat a Maryland state champion. So I'm very proud of them and what they've been able to accomplish. And we're just constantly, you know, putting things back into place where um, we're going to move forward because Monica's a, a junior. And then obviously it's farewell to uh, Devin, but that's okay too. He'll be competing at uh, Palomar Junior College in uh, San Marcos this fall. Um, so community college uh, wrestling goes on in the fall. So that's what he's, he'll be doing. And then obviously Monica will be back next year. So. Sure. Absolutely.
I'd like to bring up uh, Monica Kezis. Uh, tell us about the, your favorite part of the season. Um, my favorite part of the season was being able to win my first match at state and having the opportunity to wrestle with my boys. Monica, what weight class do you run? 101 and 106. 101, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're heavyweight, huh? <laughs> hey, well, thanks for coming. All right, the next person I'm bringing up, Devin Pretty. Come on up. Tell us about your favorite part of the season. Uh, my favorite part of the season, it was definitely winning CIF. That's because the big crowd was there, and I never seen my coach happier. He had tears in his eyes, and yeah, it was emotional. And that, my other favorite part, I'm just gonna say, was just wrestling with all my friends and meeting new people. Did a great job, and congratulations, and good luck in college next year. Okay, we're gonna have one one group picture of all the all the basketball players up here. You guys want to come up? Oh, okay. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Congratulations. And Rob, we expect you to be back here next year with a 32 and 0. <laughs> okay, get out and, and sponsor the high school teams. They're really great. Uh, basketball is certainly caught on in Rancho Mirage. The final game that they played this year, there's, there's, the uh, gymnasium was rocking. I tell you, there was not a seat left, and everybody had a great time. So just remember, next year, go Rattlers! Thanks to everybody for coming. That was a great, great year. We're, we're so incredibly proud of you all. The next is a presentation to the council by the Palm Desert Charter Middle School for the donation to help fund their trip to the Tolerance Museum. On February 23rd, the Special Assistance Fund Subcommittee of the city approved a donation of $2,500 to the charter school to assist all eighth grade students to the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles on March 22nd. Today they've returned <clears throat> regarding their trip and I'd like to invite now, their t teacher, Mrs. Davis, and her students to come to the podium. Please come to the podium over there, Mrs. Davis. I have a Mrs. Mrs. Davis here. All right, don't be bashful. You're the leader. And if you'd be kind enough to tell us about the trip and introduce yeah, hello, those I'm people Davis that came with Palm you. from Desert Charter Middle. And we're here to, again, thank you so much for the donations. And um, these are four of um, our eighth grade students out of the 450 that had the opportunity to go to that event. And I'm going to let them take it away. 
Good afternoon. We are 8th graders at Palm Desert Charter Middle School here to tell you about our experience at the Museum of Tolerance thank, thanks to the Ranch Mirage City Council's generous donation. Hi, my name is Edna Salson, and my experience at the Museum of Tolerance is definitely one I will never forget. The museum as a whole was an extremely educational and memorable experience, but there are two things I hold especially dear to my heart now. First, I appreciated that the museum touched not only on acts of prejudice in World War II, but outside of World War II as well, such as the Yugoslavian War. This was especially humbling to me because I happen to be from Croatia, ex-Yugoslavia. The second thing was the gas chamber. In it, stories of victims were told, and for 30 seconds, the room went pitch black, and I will never forget the wave of sober that rushed over me in those fleeting 30 seconds. Again, I would like to thank you for aiding and taking us there because I will never forget it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ajit Beer. I was humbled by my experience at the Museum of Tolerance. Myself in particular, as a Sikh, after being on the receiving side of racist comments for being mistaken as a Muslim, I was touched by the museum, how they had information on prejudice treatment when a specific race was being undermined by another. I also had an interest in a room where it showed a man saying racist and prejudiced comments about several races, but when he moved on to judging people, I was surprised to see that I had made those same observations about people in my past, and I had resolved to never pass judgment upon a person again. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ricky Post. My favorite part about the trip to the Tolerance Museum was being given an individual plain size card that had a little description of one child and a picture of a child that lived or died during the Holocaust. This part of the tour really hit home for me. My child was a girl and disappeared without a trace along with her family. The first thought that came to my mind after hearing this was, wow, life can end in an instant. Hearing this also made me appreciate life for all that it is and to live every day to, er, to live every day as if it were my last. I learned a true life lesson from my experience at the Tolerance Museum, and that is to live life to the fullest. Again, thank you very much for such a wonderful donation that funded such an amazing experience for my fellow peers and me. I'm Michelle Peterson. My time at the Museum of Tolerance was enlightening. It brought to the table a world of issues I never could have imagined were so severe. One of the most revelating exhibits are these two doors shown. One says prejudiced and the other unprejudiced. The kids are told to, to go through the door that they identify with. Naturally, the kids picked the unprejudiced door, much to the chagrin of our speaker. The sight was almost laughable, 45 dumbfounded kids trying to break a locked door open. She explained to us that when we make that first judgment upon meeting someone, before they've even spoken, it's prejudice. It was a daunting realization none of us could have fathomed before then. We walked through the prejudiced door almost shamefully. However, we left that museum humbled more mature versions of the people who originally walked through those doors. We learned lessons of love and hatred, cruelty and sorrow, but most importantly, we met victims. We met them through the stories, their photographs that donned the walls. And now we're the beacons who can keep their memories alive and prevent this catastrophe from ever happening again. We'd again like to thank the city of Rancho Mirage for their generous donation. We really enjoyed the experience. We are delivering thank you letters later, but before that, uh, are there any questions or comments? Go ahead. Did you have some more to say? Uh, no. Well, thank you for sharing these experiences. These are just incredible experiences. We're so glad that we were able to assist you in, in obtaining this firsthand. It's, uh, it's very moving. It's very emotional. And it, I'm sure it'll be something that you will forever remember. Thank you for coming and, and explaining it so emotionally to us. Thank you very much. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Iris. Uh, I would like to also add my thanks. Uh, both the mayor and I serve on this SAF committee, and we are so fortunate that we can, as a city, provide so much to our residents and to our uh, different charities. This one is particularly meaningful, I think, for our whole community. 
uh, because it helps to provide to provide an education for um, tolerance and if we can educate 450 students to help fight bigotry and hate in our nation we are doing great work and we are so thrilled that you came here to thank us and we are so proud of what you ta have taken from this. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. Uh, we now have the non-agenda public comment, an opportunity to, for the public to speak on issues that are not on the agenda for a maximum of three minutes per speaker. Uh, the first will be Mrs. Arcoli. Good afternoon. My name is Marilyn Arcoli Arcaroli, and a lot of you up here I do know. Speak into I the microphone. Can you hear me now? Perfectly. My name is Marilyn Arcoli Arcaroli. I live in Rancho Mirage, and I know several of you folks up here. I've come to you today to speak on three issues that are very important to me. They do all pertain to safety. I live in San Jacinto Villas. I'm very privileged to live there. I think my casita is beautiful. I have a lovely view. However, there is a problem that I think maybe uh, wasn't foreseen. I live, my patio is probably from here closer than Mr. Hobart. The perimeter fence is right there at the edge of my patio, five feet from the edge of my patio. And it has now become on the other side of the fence a major walkway. It is not owned, I understand, by the city. I understand this is owned by the water department, but also that there is some confusion as to that. There are people using this um, non-walkway, I will say. They use it on bicycles. They uh, ride small motorcycles. They walk their dogs, and as you can see, I'm very much of a dog person. However, they're not picking up after the dogs, so there is a lot of feces. They are riding on their bicycles at night. There is a group of young teenage boys. There are between five and nine of them almost three or four nights a week, and they come by at 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. The reason I know that is sometimes I'm sitting there watching TV and I see them go by. And sometimes my dog is laying on the bed and he starts with a very low growl. I know his noises. I know when there's a dog around. I know when there's friendly people around. I also know when there's something strange going on. These boys have um, stopped when I've asked them to please stop and not use this parkway. They have given me the middle finger they have called me vile names, and it goes on and on. These same boys, group of boys, are across by the library on the water, um, whitewater part of the perimeter fence. They are using the wall to go down on their bicycles, and then they walk back up, and when they get tired of doing that, they throw their bicycles over the fencing by the library, I took pictures of them, and I'm sorry that they didn't come out well enough to show you. Uh, you could not see their actual faces, only that there were nine boys on bicycles. Um, I was in the dog park when they came by again. Um, obscenities, they took out their cameras, they took my pictures, they gave me the finger, and on and on. That is one situation that is very frightening to me. The other is the bridge going over to the library. I go to the library almost daily. I go with my dog. I can no longer walk with him because it is much too frightening. When you are on the sidewalk, you are within maybe three feet of the tires of the cars coming down the 111. Um, I try to pace myself so that I watch to see the red light, that people stop, and then we begin, I have him in a, in a doggy stroller, and I go as fast as I can over that bridge to get to the other side, to the library. I get halfway across, 
and the traffic is coming, and they are not just coming at 45, 50 miles an hour. How they pick up this much speed in such a short distance is beyond me, but they are coming at freeway speeds. With them being so close to me, I am so fearful that I am going to get hit. I know the other side of 111 has um, a bridge work that goes across, and I, I guess I'm not asking you to put up a bridge work so I can go to the library safely. But I am saying, is there something we can do to put some kind of a barrier up so I would feel, I and everybody else who walks to the library, would feel a bit safe from all the traffic that's going by at such high speeds. And then the last thing is the high speeds. I don't have to tell any of you, if you've been on our 111, that it is no longer a 50 mile an hour zone. That you may have a sign up that says 50 miles an hour, but those cars are going anywhere, anywhere and way above 50. At nighttime, it has become a speedway. It is a speedway for motorcycles, and I say this because I watch it. They go not just one way, they go back and forth. And you can hear them coming from Palm Desert, and you can hear their mufflers all the way down to Cathedral City. And I know, Sean, that you said to me the other day, and also you, Mr. Kite, said that you are aware of this problem. I have been to the Sheriff's Department. I have called the Sheriff's Department. I have been before you folks two and a half years ago about this. Um, I have never received a call back from the Sheriff's Department. I have left messages. I have been um, nicely spoken to by the sergeants, and they say we're all aware of the problem, but what they told me was, we have two officers on at night who take care of this whole area. Now, whether he meant Rancho Mirage, the valley, I don't know. But they said there are two. And when I called them about the boys at 11 o'clock at night, they said, those officers are busy right now. We can't come out right now. So I see a couple of problems here. And I said they're all pertaining to safety. And I do believe they are. And I'd like to um, see if I could get a comment from you if you know who owns that illegal pathway by um, San Jacinto Villas, and if you are totally aware of the problem we have with trespassing both on our side and the library side. All right, well, thank you. What we'll do, uh, uh, Marilyn, is we will, uh, city manager will inquire with uh, our sheriff's department regarding the uh, issue that you brought up, and I'm sure Sean Smith, uh, as well as Sandra Johnson, will investigate the concern you have regarding the safety, uh, and we will look into that and respond to you. Okay. Thank I you. appreciate it very much, and I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you very much. The, uh, the next uh, speaker, please, is Jeffrey Shapiro. My name is Jeffrey Shapiro. My wife has been a Rancho Mirage property owner and resident for over 31 years, 16 years at our current residence. My in-laws have also been residents of Rancho Mirage for over 30 years, me only 12. Fear, anger, and disappointment has been slowly diminishing due to the passage of time since the night of April 9th. Fear because several of my neighbors thought homes next to them were exploding. After the fifth or tenth explosion, they realized this wasn't the case. Anger, because that was towards the Springs Country Club for setting off over 250 mortar shells hundreds of feet from our home, which resulted in the loss of a family member of our neighbor. Disappointment for the city of Rancho Mirage and the Riverside County Fire Department for allowing such a display endanger our homes and families even though two permits were issued. Ranch Mirage Municipal Code Section 8.45 states, and I quote, the exceptional quality of life and peace of quiet of the community. Table 7.1 of the city's noise ordinance limits noise levels until 10 p.m. at 55 decibels. After 10 o'clock, 50 decibels. On around 10 p.m. on the night of April 9th, 2016, 
coming from the Springs Country Club. I estimate the noise level from exploding motor shells between 120 and 140 decibels, roughly that of a sonic boom. But this was different. This was a continuous level of noise until the explosions of the display ended. The concussive blast caused car alarms to go off in front of my house on Kirkwood Court. One neighbor's dog bolted in fear from her house on Kensington and was killed on Country Club Drive, ironically at the Springs entrance near Bob Hope Drive. Another's cat went missing for 24 hours. There are other numerous hor other horror stories of frightened animals that my neighbors have shared with me, those including at today's meeting. The 6th Street residential neighborhood immediately south of Yale Drive in the Springs was not notified of the impending war zone-like level of noise. The city permit required notification of residents within one mile of the staging area, probably 25% of the residents of Ranch Mirage. The Riverside Fire Department had no consideration of wind direction and speed, which affects launching of motors and where the debris field should be. In 2013, there was over 11,000 accidents of individuals, private, and spectators due to fireworks. There were no fire trucks in our six streets in case of a serious mishap. Over eight homes in the springs with cedar shake roofs baking in the sun and heat for decades were immediately adjacent to the exclusion zone of the spectators and the structures, which was 210 feet. Dozens of other homes close by also had cedar shake rule. Once again, weather factors were not considered as peak gusts for April 9th were 25 miles an hour. Sustained winds between 9 and 10 o'clock were 10 to 18 miles per hour from the northwest. The sound and debris from these explosions moved southeast towards my neighborhood, 210 feet or not. I have met with the city manager, staff, Riverside Fire Department, and expressed our belief that the city and fire department did not meet its obligation regarding the safety of the residents of the city, especially our neighborhood. I feel confident that after my meetings with Mr. Binder, that major improvements of the permitting process will be forthcoming so as not to endanger Ranch Mirage residents in the future. As for the management of the Springs Country Club, I believe they did not fulfill all the requirements of the permits. Additionally, if they think it is a good idea to set off fireworks next to the homes that have cedar shake roofs, they ought to have their heads examined. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Shapiro. I understand that uh, the city manager is working with you on this issue, and uh, he will be responding directly to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, person is Stan Levinson. Mayor Weil, members of the council, staff, and visitors. I'm here to uh, return to you one of the uh, blue ribbons, not for winning something. These were put on trees by Sandra Johnson of your code enforcement department so that they, those would be the trees to be taken down. Um, the golf course, through its uh, proprietary property operation known as Western Golf Properties, had created and turned in this list to the city to um, rectify the uh, violations under your nuisance sections of the code. Um, they took a little bit of liberty. Most of the things, a lot of these things haven't been done that they have marked as complete and the place is still looking terrible. There's no more water, maybe less water being put on the golf course now and we're going into the hot season. So uh, whatever a little bit of grass might be left, we have no idea what's going to happen there. And anyway, um, I'm concerned I want the city to make all the revenue they can make in fines off of these guys. I mean, they deserve to be hit at the highest level on everything they've done. They have caused so much damage to our place, and our lawsuit against them is different from yours because ours is for monetary values that are lost in the properties of the homes there. Um, the city, of course, probably finds their stuff all described under the nuisance section of your code book. 
anyway, um, we are we are really trying to find out where things stand and what we can do to help and uh, and take a part when work with the city. And uh, to that end, I'm asking the city if if anyone has determined if there's going to be a solution regarding the. Uh, what I want to call it, the repair of the and of the operating ponds out in front, and uh, where the main entrance to Rancho Mirage Country Club is, as well as to rectify certain landscaping problems that are uh, you know in there, and uh, also the vector control. I mean, I know that Sandra Johnson has been over there on numerous occasions, and yet. I have been out on the golf course illegally violating the signs that accuse me of, of, of trespassing, but nobody was there to catch me, so I took liberty and did that. But anyway, the, there are mounds of, of ant hills all over in the fairways and on the sides of the golf course. And um, I know that the vector control is supposedly showing up on a regular basis, but uh, it just seems like it just keeps deteriorating further and further. And the pattern of our situation is glorified by what happened in San Diego with Riverwalk Golf Course there, Cottonwood, uh, Cottonwood Country Club, uh, Carmel Highlands, and Stone Ridge Country Club. So these guys have come in and bought these golf courses using uh, money that they have raised from ball players and hockey players at the, in the major leagues. And those poor guys are going to get worked over and have nothing when it's all done. So anyway, I, I just wanted to alert you to this. And uh, I obtained this from Sandra. And she was kind enough to give me a copy of it. But in going out there, they have done a little maybe. But they're not making any effort. And the water is not coming on much more than it was when we were timing it. And it came on on the cycles of twice a week. For 90 seconds and now going into the hot time the hot season none of the plants are going to survive over there so i appreciate your time and patience and hearing me out and if you have any questions i'll be happy to try and respond uh, thank you stan as you know sandra johnson will be uh, most receptive to your calls and she's uh, extremely immediate when it comes to pursuing any possible remedies so well, i i, uh, I just, couldn't you agree can stay, with you, Ted, stay in I, touch with her about I, that. I couldn't agree with you more in fact i've often said here to her and publicly she's the best code enforcement officer that this city has had in the 17 years that i've been here she could teach the class on how to do it okay i'm sure she appreciates the compliment well, thank you thank you pleasure Stan. okay we now uh We'll proceed to city council member comments. Uh, why don't we start, Richard? Dana? Thank you. Iris. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just like to pass on some interesting information about the history of our library as we celebrate its 20th anniversary uh, and its very humble beginnings. The residents of Rancho Mirage and the entire Coachella Valley have long realized that the Rancho Mirage Library is a brilliant place for borrowing books and media items. So I thought I might, you might like to know just a little bit about how it all started. Going back to 1988, there was actually no library to speak of within the city limits except for a twice weekly visit from the Riverside County Bookmobile. When it became apparent that the Rancho Mirage was growing so rapidly, a movement was started to create our own library. And in 1993, a library planning committee was established. The now home of the River Shopping Center and Entertainment Complex was initially viewed as a potential setting for a library. However, a more ideal location was found and that location was the former Bank of America building in the Las Palmas Shopping Center. Not only was it available, but it also proved to be a good size and a good location as well as suitable for conversion to a library facility. 
The city closed escrow on the property in August 1994, and the Rancho Mirage Public Library was on its way. The 11,000 square foot building seemed perfect, opening its doors with its modest 16,000 items, many of which were donated. But in three short years, the collection grew to nearly 44,000 items, and the facility became one of the busiest in the state. With its astounding growth and standing room only crowds for concerts, theater performances, films, and lectures, it became apparent that a larger facility was very much needed. So, with the Annenberg Foundation's very generous $2 million gift to purchase the present location's land, a new Rancho Mirage Library project was moving forward. By the time the new library opened, its collection grew to 85,000 items, and it continues to grow and now includes approximately 14,000 DVDs. Our cultural and educational opportunities will carry our library into the future, and as David Bryan, our library's executive director, has stated, dwindling patronage has prompted libraries across the nation to scale back services. Yet, in Rancho Mirage, our cultural center model built around lifelong learning as our mission has resulted in a golden era for our library. Needless to say, we could not be more proud of our library and of the great foresight of our city's past and present leadership. I would like to extend a much deserved congratulations to our fabulous library on their 20th anniversary and I would like to encourage everyone to check out some material, visit our library whenever you can, come to our events, and make it your home away from home. Thank you, and thank you to David Bryant. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. Charlie? Just a um, happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody. Hope you had a good time and have a uh, margarita on everybody. Take care. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Charlie. You. Uh, I'll now ask our, for the approval of the uh, minutes of April 7th and April 21st. Are there any corrections that I might have? No. no? Move approval. Second. Please vote. Motion is approved, five to zero. I'll ask uh, Randy, our City Manager to go through the consent calendar. Can we add to the agenda? Yes. Can you please read what will be added to the agenda, uh, Councilman? Uh, <clears throat> staff informs me that uh, we need to add two matters to the agenda as urgency items, one respecting a generator issue and the other uh, having to do with a rundown apartment building. I would move that we add those two subjects to the agenda. It takes a four-fifths vote to add them. And that's a closed session agenda. Both of them are closed yes. session? To the closed session yeah. agenda. And this is Steve, and these will vote? be a second. These will be added okay. to the closed session agenda as we'll potential initiation of litigation seven. items. Pursuant to government code section five four nine five six point nine. Yes. <laughs> We've got that. All right. Thank you, Steve. Vote? You're welcome. Call for vote to add that. Are you asking for a vote? Yes. It's been moved and seconded. Vote, please. Councilmember Townsend, can you? Thank you. Here it is. All right, those two items have been added to the closed session agenda. Uh, Randy, on the consent calendar, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, several of the speakers talked about uh, peace and quiet enjoyment of their residences in Rancho Mirage, and staff works hard to preserve that. It's the reason people live in 92270, and it's uh, disquieting, uh, to say the least, to have three different people stand up at the podium one after another and. Um, 
concerned about their quiet enjoyment of their um, residence. Ranch Marsh Country Club, San Jacinto Villas with the CVWD trail, and uh, Mr. Shapiro adjacent to the Springs Country Club with a fire um, works permit that occurred there. And I want the City Council to know that I am working with staff on all three of those. Unfortunately, the city, city cannot trample on private property um, rights and we do have processes that we have to follow and it takes time to go through those. Um, there's a legal process we have to go through to remedy those situations, but I assure you that staff is on it and we will address those uh, to the greatest extent that we can, working directly with the property owners and the neighbors that are affected. And um, that's what Rancho Mirage is about in my mind and I think our staff believes the same thing, police and fire included. And I think that our residents do as well because we always get very favorable comments at all times, and that's the reason they live uh, in our wonderful city. Thank you, Randy. Yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor, so items number one, two, and four I'd like to pull from the consent calendar. We'll have individual staff members uh, do those presentations. And uh, so let's go to items, item number three and number five, please. And in celebration of Cinco de Mayo, I'd like to make this presentation uh, for number three. <laughs> Item number three on your consent calendar is award of contract for Bob Hope Drive, Frank Sinatra Drive intersection improvements. Uh, we are expanding that. Thank you, Dustin. We are expanding the capacity of the intersection. You can see on the aerial photograph in front of you. We are adding through lanes north and south and dual left turn lanes, east and west and north and south. And there'll be a free right southbound Bob Hope Drive to westbound Frank Sinatra Drive. The total cost of this project will be $2.2 million. It was budgeted in the um, existing fiscal year budget capital improvement program. Uh, we put it out to bid on March 24th. We opened the bids on April 26th. Granite Construction Company is the lowest responsible bidder at $1.9 million. Adding the uh, incidentals and the 10% contingency brings us to $2.2 million total. The recommendation is on page 3-1 of your staff report. Item number four is pulled, and item number five are demands. Mr. Mayor, we are here to answer any questions. Thank you. Love the mustache. The mustache was great. Fun fact: Did you know that 2.9 billion dollars per year are spent on margaritas really? in the United States? Yeah. Okay, well, thanks where, to Letty, she told us that this morning. Randy, where are ours? If that much money is spent on them, huh? it's a government meeting. No, alcohol you're holding allowed. out. <laughs> All right. If there are no other questions on items three and five, I'll call for a motion Move approval. to approve those items on the consent calendar. Please vote. Okay, items three and five have been approved. We'll now go back to item one. Randy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll have our Director of Public Works, Mark Sambito, talk about electrochromatic glass windows. Mm. Mark. Thank you, Mr. Binder. Uh, honorable Mayor, members of the council, the item before you this afternoon is a request to approve a contract with Greentown for the installation of <coughs> electrochromatic glass over at the public library. The purpose of the glass is threefold. <clears throat> One is safety. In the event that we have a presentation in the community room and it requires the shades to be drawn in order to make it dark enough to have a projector, we will have to lower the blinds as far down as to block the exit doors, some of the exit doors. That's not a good thing, it's a safety problem. So by putting in electrochromatic glass, we're able to uh, avoid having to do that. Two is we want to control better and more efficiently the temperature throughout the library. Because of the amount of glass we have, for example, in the Annenberg room, we have a great deal of heat absorption during the summer months. It makes it very challenging for us on the maintenance end to continue to keep the building at a comfortable level. 
So having the ability to adjust the tint on the glass will allow us the opportunity to better control and manage our uh, costs for the electrical use. And lastly is to protect the materials on the shelves. A lot of the materials are damaged through the regular sun absorption through the number of windows that we have. So in order to protect the library materials and reduce our cost for regularly replacing them, we feel that the electrochromatic glass would be ideal. The electrochromatic glass is basically an electronically controlled glass that with the turn of a dial will tint itself. So we are able to tint a room and make it dark enough to show projection movies and, and things on the screen just by the turn of a button. So by doing that, we can very easily control the amount of light that comes into the room. Again, that will solve all three of our problems. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Mark, I do. Is this uh, all in one shot or is it several panels every other day or what? How do you do it? It'll cover three basic rooms, uh, the community room and the Annenberg room, and then the conference room up front. It will all be done under one contract and it will be done at once. We imagine it will be about three panes of glass a day. We don't want to take the glass out and not have something there at the end of the workday. So they will do about three panes a day, wiring each individually by coordinating with the library staff on where the controls are located. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. No other questions? I'll ask for a motion to Turn your microphone on. I'm sorry about that. If there are no other questions, I'll ask for a uh, motion to award the contract so to moved. install. Second. Okay. okay, please vote. All right, motion is approved five to zero. Uh, item number two, Randy, if you would. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll turn this over to our Director of Administrative Services, Isaiah Hagerman, to present the quarterly treasurer's report. Isaiah. Thank you, Mr. Binder. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, this is our standard quarterly report over the city's investments. Uh, for the quarter, we met our benchmark. The city pool returned 1.25% which equated to approximately $300,000 for the quarter. This report details all the investments that are held and controlled by the city. Uh, the recommendation is to receive and file this report, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? None. I will ask for a motion to approve. No motions, receive and file. Oh, is that strictly receive and file? Okay. Yeah, receive and file. Great. Randy, would you go on to number, uh, item number four? So we don't need a vote on receive and file. Right. Item number four on your consent calendar is a levy of assessments for landscape and lighting maintenance district number 87-01. City engineer Bill Enos will present this report. Bill. Thank you, Mr. Binder. Mr. Mayor, members of the city council, uh, this item is the first step in uh, the annual process we have of establishing the levy of assessments for landscape. Number 87-01, sorry. Um, and uh, staff's asking city council to approve three, re three resolutions that are necessary. The first, initiating procedures for the annual levy of the assessments. The second, declaring the, the council's intention to levy those assessments and is setting a date for the public hearing. And the third is uh, reviewing and uh, approving the preliminary uh, engineer's report for that district. The data set for the public hearing, that would be your scheduled June 2nd City Council meeting. That's in the second resolution. And prior to that meeting, there will be noticing of that. Uh, it will, there will be, uh, it would be advertised in the newspaper as well as posted at the regular place that that will be considered. 
The uh, re quick review of the uh, assessments for this year is shown on page 4-3 of your staff report. Uh, the district was first formed in 1997, and you can see the rows since 197 of the uh, various assessments for the different zones. Down at the bottom, the row down at the very bottom is 2016-17. And if you look across that row, you'll notice that the assessments uh, from last year have varied little, very little. The first four districts, anyway, the first is 26.42, 237.14, 421, and 7102. Those have varied very little from the previous year. Zone D, however, has gone up approximately $90 per per unit, and that's largely due to increased uh, maintenance costs as well as wanting to establish a, uh, a suitable reserve account in that fund. If you go over to Zone F, that's a new one that was just started last year. And uh, the first assessment was based on the anticipated cost. However, as you see, we went from 849 per uh, dwelling unit down to 393, significant drop. Those folks will be very happy. Uh, staff is able to negotiate a very, um, a very good maintenance uh, contract on that project, so we're pretty happy about that, and their costs will be greatly reduced. Um, again, the public hearing will come, or this item will come before you again for public hearing on June second, and um, that concludes my report. And thank you, Bill, uh, Mr. Mayor. The recommendation is to adopt the three resolutions listed on page four one of your staff report. All right, and. Uh, before I call for uh, a motion on that, are there any questions that anybody might have on any of the other consent items on the uh, schedule? If not, then I would call for a motion on item number four. Can Steve uh, Q hear us? Steve? Yes, I can hear you. Can these all be done on one vote or do we need three uh, motions? No, you can do one vote. Okay, we will. We will have the uh, one motion. I move that we adopt resolution 2016 next in order, initiating proceedings for the annual levy of assessments for the Metro's Consolidated Maintenance. Keeping and lighting maintenance assessment district number 87-01 for fiscal years 2016-17. Move adoption of res the next resolution in order, declaring its intention to levy annual assessments for the Rancho Mirage Consolidated Landscaping and Lighting Maintenance Assessment District 87-01 for fiscal year 2016-17. And the third resolution, number 2016, next in order, for preliminary approval of the engineer's annual levy report for the Rancho Mirage Consolidated Landscaping and Lighting Maintenance Assessment District number 8701 for fiscal year 2016-17. I have a question. Mr. Yes. Richard? Uh, Bill, on item zone v, uh, F is the one you mentioned. How many people are affected by that change? Zone F has 21, 21 units. That's for Lane, the project that's under construction. Uh, 21 uh, EDUs in that district. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I do have a question. <laughs> Was there not a movement to re-landscape Duvall and Frank Sinatra, the empty lot? Has that been put on hold because of the bridge? Does anybody know what's happened to that? Mark, you? I know, I know we talked about it and approved it. Randy? Yes, that's true. Uh, Joel Castillo made a presentation to you last year about that project as well as some drought tolerant re-landscaping along 111 when we pulled out the turf. Uh, no, I don't have an update, but I'll get one for you at your next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, may we have a, uh, a motion and a vote. Is there a motion? Are you calling for a vote? The motion is yeah. already there. Yeah. Yeah. And, there was a and call for a vote, second. please. Okay, the motion is approved five to zero. We'll now go to uh, your report on the CV link. Dana, do you have any update on that? No, nothing, uh, nothing new has happened except to mention the city of uh, Indian Wells has put on their ballot for November a similar measure to our measure one uh, that will be a yes or no vote for whether or not 
the residents approve CV Link uh, operating in the city of Indian Wells. Uh, I have no, I think that probably sums up uh, the issue there. The next uh, the first item number seven on the action calendar will be an award of contract for the general plan, and that will be presented by uh, Jeremy Klein. Jeremy? Thank you, Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, as the Mayor said, for your consideration today is an award of contract for general plan update services. I'd like to start my presentation by thanking the General Plan Update Subcommittee, Council Members Hobart and Kite, for their contributions thus far in the process and look forward to their continued involvement as we move forward with the project. The General Plan is the City's primary document for long range and comprehensive planning. Um, in its most basic terms, it can be likened to a blueprint for the overall development of a city. State law requires that all cities and counties have an adopted general plan. Uh, historically, the city of Rancho Mirage has updated its general plan roughly every 10 years. The last update occurred in 2005 and prior to that in 1997. So it's been about 11 years now since it was last updated. Um, included within your packet today was uh, this handout. And what this is, is the general plan executive summary. Uh, it's an interesting document. It talks about what a general plan is, its functions. Um, it also has the city's visions. It has uh, some maps in there, but it also includes really what the meat and potatoes of the general plan is, and that's all the goals and policies. Uh, the goals and policies that are embedded within the general plan are used to guide the uh, decision making and really creates the framework for how the city uh, makes decisions. So um, it's critical to review those uh, on a somewhat regular basis just to ensure that the vision for the city, uh, the goals and the policies that, that are recommending these things are still relevant to, uh, to uh, the city's long-term goals. So that's gonna be a big part of this update. Um, a request for proposals for general plan update services was advertised for bid on March 7, 2016. Uh, the bid was open for approximately four weeks, and during that time, four proposals were submitted. Three of the proposers were selected for interviews, uh, and those interviews occurred on Monday, April 18, 2016. The interview panel itself consisted of the general plan update subcommittee, the city manager, and three members of staff. Uh, upon conclusion of the interviews, Rincon Consultants Incorporated was determined to be the most qualified firm within the established budget that could best serve the needs of the city in facilitating the general plan update. The proposed cost for these services totals $331,218, and should city council approve the contract as recommended by staff, Work on the general plan update will begin immediately and is projected to conclude within 12 months. Um, in addition to the work that will be performed by RINCON, staff has asked Terra Nova Planning and Research to write a new arts and culture element for inclusion in the general plan. The city of Rancho Mirage plays host to a number of facilities and events which are recognized both regionally and globally for their artistic and cultural significance as was uh, demonstrated earlier by Council Member Smotridge um, with the library. So we would like to continue to foster and promote these amenities, and we feel that an arts and culture element would uh, be the best mechanism to do that. A bid for these particular services has not yet been proposed, but staff does not expect this work to exceed the cost of $25,000. That being said, staff is proposing a minor amendment to the recommendation, which would read as follows. Staff recommends that the City Council award the general plan update services contract to Rincon Consultants Incorporated in the amount of $331,218 and that a not to exceed amount of $25,000 be awarded to Terra Nova Planning and Research for the development of an arts and culture element. A representative from Rincon is in the audience today, should you have questions of him. Uh, that basically concludes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions, and thank you. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. I would like to um, amend the recommendation. 
uh, in discussing the economic element of the general plan with uh, Mr. Binder, we believe that specifically hiring a fiscal consultant to update that element is an important component of the general plan. So my amendment would be the following, that we direct staff to include a comprehensive update to the fiscal and economic element of the general plan in an amount not to exceed $50,000. Even with this amendment, we are still well below the $450,000 that was set aside to update the general plan. Can I have a second to the amendment? Well, we haven't got the motion here. Can I, can I make one motion and try to tie it sure. all together for us? Sure. <clears throat> I would move the City Council award the general plan update services contract to Rincon Consultants, Inc., in the amount of $331,218,000, and that an amendment be added not to exceed $25,000 to be payable to Terra Nova Planning and Research, Inc., to write a new arts and culture element for inclusion in the general plan, as well as the suggested men amendment by the mayor uh, adding an additional, how much is that? Twenty fifty. Fifty thousand dollars payable to whom? To will it be Terra Nova to conduct that? No. no. To Rincon. Yes. A to add fifty thousand dollars to the Rincon contract for them to add another element uh, to the uh, general plan. Uh, concerning fiscal, what's the title? How do economic you? Economic and fiscal element. E economic and fiscal elements. Is there a second? Second. All right. Before you vote, uh, I, okay. I would want to uh, ask uh, if there are any additional questions, and uh, ask the consultant if he would like to make a couple of comments before we do so. Sure to hit the red button. Or am I good? Oh, it's already working. You're on. Okay. You're good to go. uh, Joe Power from Rencon Consultants, and we, we very much uh, look forward to the opportunity to work with the city on this. This is going to be a really exciting project from our standpoint, not just to update your general plan, but one of the things that we're, we've proposed that I think others didn't was to incorporate uh, what's called GIS into the plan, which will give you interactive mapping capabilities on your website where people can will actually be able to go in and find out specific data and information on individual parcels in the city and we think that's going to be a, a very useful tool for the community moving forward uh, with respect to the fiscal and economic element we are more than happy to get somebody on board for that we have a firm that we work with a lot called the Nadelson dale group they're uh, out of Yorba Linda. In fact, we're doing a, a, a general plan with them in Alhambra right now where they're covering just that piece for us. Uh, we would be delighted to bring them on board unless there's another uh, firm that the city prefers. But uh, we've worked with them many times and I think you'd be very happy with their work. Thank you. You'll talk to staff about that and you get an answer to your question. Absolutely. Be happy to answer any questions, of Great. course. Too. Thank you. Are there any other questions that... Uh... Council has, Mr. Or Mr. Mayor. We anticipate the process will take about a year, which, you know, is, is pretty quick for a general plan, but I think this is a, you know, a, a pretty straightforward update for us, so we think a year is doable. Uh -huh. Well, you come highly recommended. I'm glad to hear it. Richard, did you have a question? Yeah, I had a question of Randy uh, regarding the $50,000 dollar amount on this uh, addendum amendment. Yes. Where did that figure come from? Experience. <laughs> we think that's a reasonable number. I, I think okay. that seems about right uh, seems in our experience as well. I bet we could have said 45. <laughs> you, you haven't voted yet. Or you could have said chapter 11 in experience. The, uh, well, we will try to come under that. <laughs> the other amount of 25,000 for but Terra Nova, is that a figure that they provided to us? They've given us a preliminary of about $20,000. Uh, but I want to make sure there's enough money in there for appropriate graphics and photographs uh, to make it user friendly. So it says not to exceed 50,000. Yeah, not to exceed 50 on the economic and fiscal and not to exceed 25 on the arts and culture. And even with those amendments, we're still <laughs> well under the budget that the council approved for the general plan update. Okay. 
Are there any other questions? And you can do that, is that correct? Sure, absolutely. Are there any other questions from the audience? And by the, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Randy. By the way, the arts and culture element was, uh, would be awarded to Terra Nova because it was their idea to the uh, uh, interview panel. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. There is a, uh, a motion and a second on the floor. May I call for a vote, please? And the motion is approved five to zero. Uh, item number uh, eight on the action calendar has been continued to May 19th. With that, uh, Steve, uh, Quintanilla, would you uh, cover the closed session items, please? I, I will, Mayor. But before I make the closed session announcements, I just want everybody to know where I am. I'm in Newport Beach attending my annual city attorney's conference. So I'm here with about 500 other city attorneys from across the state, and I walk around with proudly wearing a tag that says City Attorney for City of Rancho Mirage. And I am a celebrity here because of the great things that Rancho Mirage has done, the council has done. I've been here for almost 24 hours, and I've been approached by several attorneys asking about drones because Rancho Mirage was the first city to come up with the idea of regulating drones, even though we didn't adopt it, but we were a prime example of how to regulate drones. Um, the issue of vacation rentals came up. In fact, there was a um, big discussion about our case, the Brian Harrison case, and how the city was successful in requiring that the minimum age be 30 years old in order to rent a vacation rental. That's a big, big issue for a lot of cities. Um, the issue of our relationship with our local tribe has come up. There's a group of um, city attorneys who have asked me to attend a breakout session to talk about how we successfully have worked out a deal with our local tribe to contribute a public safety tax. And that was um, Mr. Hobart's great idea, and along with the vacation rental issue. And finally, the really big issue that came up during our lunch breakout session had to do with redevelopment and what cities, former redevelopment agencies, did with their redevelopment money. I didn't volunteer this information. It came from the stage. Somebody mentioned Rancho Mirage and how they brilliantly used for, um, RDA money to underground their utilities. And we are the only redevelopment agency that did that. And so when they asked me how I figured that out, I said, no, that wasn't me. That was another attorney, and he happens to be our, our council member. That's Dana Hobart. So I'm walking around here feeling like a celebrity, thanks to Rancho Mirage. In any event, so with that said, the council is now going to recess into closed session to consider five potential litigation items pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9. And the council also is going to discuss the existing case known as Veronica Juarez versus City of Ranch and Lodge. And we're going to meet pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9. So now you can go into closed session. Well, thank you, Steve. If you had a. Uh... If you had a uh, screen and a picture on a teleconference, you would see that uh, the city manager has put a sombrero over the screen in your absence here. So, uh, okay, I, I'm, you know, you I'm could, you could be viewed and, uh, and recognized. I think okay. that concludes all of our items for today. This meeting is adjourned. You know, recessed. We're recessed in the closed session. Correct the record. Okay. Correct the record. Some, okay. Somebody needs correct to call me to from recess. the closed session. Did you to get that? Recess to closed session. Correct. Cor the record is requested. He's requested that we go to re into closed session and into recess, not kind of termination of the meeting. Okay. Pretty correct.